So, welcome to today's lecture. Uh, in uh, this lecture, we will cover uh, various aspects of uh, antiviral agents. Uh, as uh, we have discussed quite a bit about how the uh, HIV and related viruses uh, uh, can infect uh, mammalian cell and how they are able to use the host machinery to produce new virions which then can go ahead and, and infect newer host cells and so on. So, uh, in today's lecture we will discuss it at uh, some strategies to, to counter this uh, virus. So, the first major class of uh, inhibitors that we are going to look at today are these protease inhibitors. So, uh, somewhere in the 90s, uh, X-ray crystallography became quite prevalent in drug discovery and so you could crystallize proteins along with uh, ligands and then therefore you could understand how the uh, major interactions occur. And also parallelly, molecular modeling uh, had matured to some extent as a, as a field and so it was, it was being used to design new structures. So, using the synergy of, of X-ray crystallography and molecular modeling, a lot of structure based design of, uh, of inhibitors was possible. Okay? So, this enzyme called as viral enzyme HIV protease was an important enzyme to inhibit. So, we have already previously looked at the reverse transcriptase inhibitors and since reverse transcriptase is an enzyme that is present uh, primarily in uh, viruses and not in humans, uh, this was something that uh, we could exploit. Uh, so, but unless unlike those reverse transcriptase inhibitors which need a phosphorylation to be activated, these uh, protease inhibitors are not prodrugs okay? and so they need not be activated, they can uh, they are active in their uh, actual administered form. So, look at the HIV protease uh, enzyme. So, this is an enzyme uh, which belongs to the, to the family of aspartyl proteases and we have already looked at this previously uh, several lectures back or several weeks back actually. Uh, about how aspartyl proteases work, we will look at it briefly once again. But these uh, enzymes uh, catalyze the cleavage of peptide bonds okay? and uh, they contain an aspartic acid in the active site and uh, that is crucial for the uh, catalytic mechanism. So, uh, here is the uh, active site of this enzyme and there is something very interesting called as flaps which we will look at later. So, this enzyme can be obtained by uh, synthesis or it can be cloned and purified. And so, we can have access to large amounts of this enzyme pretty much. So, then it is crystallized uh, with and without an inhibitor uh, bound to the active site. So, what happens is that when you crystallize it in its native form, then you get a structure which probably resembles the, the, the form in which it is going to bind to the inhibitor. And once the inhibitor is bound, uh, that would be the, that would represent the induced fit that happens. So, now based on this we can have a good idea about what happens during the binding process and after it is bound. So, this kind of uh, information provides an ideal uh, mechanism or ideal vehicle for us to, uh, to understand or to be able to, to carry out structure based drug design. Uh, so, using this we, are a, we would be able to design novel inhibitors. So, the HIV protease uh, is a symmetrical dimer made up of two identical units. So, it is shown here, this is one unit and that is the second unit and it contains about uh, 99 amino acids. The active site is at the interface between the protein units and is also symmetrical with two fold rotational symmetry. So, here is the active site which is also uh, has a C2 symmetry uh, in it. So, the enzyme ac actually has quite broad specificity and it can cleave a variety of peptide bond in viral polypeptides. But crucially, it can cleave the bond between a proline residue and as shown here, a proline residue and an aromatic amino acid residue such as phenylalanine or tyrosine. So, the cleavage of the peptide bond next to the proline is quite unusual and does not occur in mammalian proteases, which we are already familiar with such as renin, pepsin or cathepsin D. So, the chances of achieving selectivity against HIV protease uh, is actually quite good. So, this is another aspect of, of uh, drug design that we have discussed previously. So, when we are using or when we are identifying a, a enzyme as a target, we need to keep in mind that that enzyme may or may not be present in the mammalian cell or the host cell as well as the, the is there anything unique about the enzyme that one could exploit. So, that one could achieve selectivity. So, here this enzyme satisfies both the criteria that is it is present in, in mammalian cells or humans, but it is not uh, going to cleave that particular bond and so therefore, one could uh, use it for drug discovery. 
So the symmetrical nature of the viral enzyme and its active site is not present in mammalian proteases. So there's a there's a significant difference in the activity of uh, or the structure of the mammalian version and the viral version. So in this enzyme, there are eight binding subsites in the enzyme, four on on each of the protein unit, and located on either side of the catalytic region. And so these are numbered as S1 to S4, and or S1 prime to S4 prime on the other side. So you can see here this is these are the subunits. Now, the relevant side chains on the substrate are numbered as P1 to P4 and P1 prime to P4 prime. So, here is P1, P2, P3 and P4 and the corresponding other sites. So, the peptide bond in the substrate is also involved in hydrogen bonding interaction with the active site and here is the catalytic region. Now, an in interesting thing about this uh, protease enzyme is that there is a water molecule present in the active site which acts as a hydrogen bond bridge. So, here is the water molecule and this is the hydrogen bond bridge that we are talking about and what happens is that this bridge bridges two isoleucine uh, NH groups on the enzyme flaps. So, we have already looked at those two flaps in the, in the enzyme and so the hydrogen bonding network has the effect of closing the flaps over the active site once the substrate is bound. So, it is almost like how this the flaps are open and after the substrate is bound the flaps close. So, the aspartic acid units here were shown here ASP 25 and 25 prime on the floor of the active site are involved in the catalytic mechanism. Each of these residues is contributed by one of the protein subunits and the carboxylate side chains interact with the bridging water molecule during the hydrolysis mechanism. This is again something that we have looked at previously. So, here is the mechanism that we discussed previously for renin. So, here is the bridging water molecule and this water molecule is actually activated by the aspartate residue here and by assistance from the aspartate, this water molecule attacks the amide bond and forms the tetrahedral intermediate which then subsequently undergoes cleavage to produce an amine and a carboxylic acid. And therefore, this uh, mechanism is what is operating in renin, a very similar mechanism is operational in HIV protease. So, based on this mechanism, one could suggest that uh, transition state uh, inhibitors can be used and now there are many strategies uh, that have been used uh, which have been previously used for renin inhibitors and these can be adapted for the design of HIV protease inhibitors. So, just to uh, sort of uh, recap, transition state inhibitors are designed to mimic the transition state of the enzyme catalyzed reaction. So, here the logic is that if the inhibitor is designed to resemble the transition state, then the enzyme binds to the transition state significantly stronger compared to the uh, to the substrate or the product. And so, once this happens, then it uh, it results in a in a situation where that it competes out the natural substrate. So, therefore, uh, inhibitors resembling the transition state are quite uh, actively sought after. So, based on the uh, chemistry that had already been developed on from renin inhibitors, so there are a number of uh, you know, sort of inhibitors that one could propose which have all these various functional groups like uh, dihydroxyethylene, hydroxyethylene, reduced amide, uh, hydroxyethylamine and so on and so forth. And uh, of course, we could also use uh, you know statines and, and uh, statones as uh, potential inhibitors. So, a large number of these uh, structures were uh, synthesized uh, which incorporated these isosteres. And what was found was the hydroxyethylamine uh, was found to be the most effective. So, this isosteer has a hydroxyl group which mimics the one of the hydroxyl groups in the tetrahedral intermediate. So, here is the tetrahedral intermediate and here is the hydroxyl group and therefore, uh, it can bind to the aspartate residues in the active site. So, having identified the suitable transition state isosteres, Inhibitors were then designed based on the enzyme's natural peptide substrates so that it can go and bind to the uh, HIV protease and because it is an inhibitor, therefore, it does not undergo turnover that is there is no amide bond to cleave, therefore, it would bind to the uh, enzyme and uh, prevent further substrates from acting on it. So, there are 8 binding subsites in the enzyme as we discussed previously. And these are numbered as S1 to S4 on one side and S1 prime to S4 prime on the other side. Now, the relevant uh, change on the substrate are again labeled as P1 to P4 
and P1 prime to P4 prime. So, using this concept, there have been a number of uh, inhibitors that have been developed. Here is the transition state isosteer which has a IC50 of about 6500 nanomolar and subsequently this has been further optimized to, uh, to reduce the IC50 to 140 nanomolar and finally, further modifications led to an improved IC50 of 23 nanomolar. So, we are getting really close to, uh, to where we want to get to and finally, based on the interaction of the S3, S1, S2 subunits and keeping in the transition state in mind as well as S2 prime and S1 prime, this molecule which is quinovir uh, was uh, identified. This has an IC50 of less than 0.4 nanomolar and that is fantastic for uh, use as an HIV protease inhibitor. So, finally, uh, this structure uh, saquinavir was developed uh, which has the following structure and if you co-crystallize this molecule uh, in with uh, HIV protease, you find that it fits very beautifully into the active site with the following binding interactions.